thank you holy spirit so like i said you are sharing an understanding your assignment and then the ability to separate it from your giftings did i start with the scripture lord help me now now the truth of the matter is that every believer is equipped with the gift now i will need people that will be posting scriptures for me very fast if you really want us to achieve much this morning you get so maybe you should give me romans chapter 12 you post from verse 6 to 8 quickly quickly romans chapter 12 we are reading from verse 6 to 8 just help me let's run i want to keep to time but I also want to achieve much. Romans, every believer, there is no believer who has received the Holy Spirit that is not equipped with a gift. You see that, um, and what is it now? First Corinthians chapter 12 is all about the gift, what you call the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So remember the word is called gift. It means you didn't work for it. It means you didn't pray for it. It means you didn't put any it, it once it's a gift it means you did nothing to receive it as a gift if i give you something now it's because i want to not because you deserve it so the moment you have the holy spirit part of what the spirit comes with is giftings and what is the purpose of those giftings you cannot serve god so faithfully you cannot be able to serve god well without a gift so the reason for those giftings is to help us to fulfill our assignment. Note that your gift is not the assignment. That's what we are really teaching. Let me say it again. Your gift is not your assignment. Your gift is given to help you to fulfill your assignment. Is it getting clear already? Let me say it again. Your gift is not your assignment. It's not what God has called you to do. Your gift is only given to you to help you fulfill your assignment let me say it again your gift is not your assignment your gift is not your assignment the gift is only given to you to help you fulfill your assignment i believe that has entered so when the holy ghost came into you are we here the holy ghost when you receive the holy ghost he came with those gifts the, the apostles had an assignment but they all received gift and if you study them well their giftings were different paul was an apostolic teacher peter is an apostolic evangelist john is an apostolic prophet that's why when you read the books of john i believe in the whole epistles I'm sorry, in the whole gospel, the best for me is the book of John. It's wonderful. It's highly expressed. The book of John is, is my best in the whole four gospel. And when you read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you will see how the guy writes, even in Revelation, because he's a prophetic writer. So there, and did you notice that throughout the entire book of Acts, there was no single miracle that was traced to John. We didn't see one when they helped the crippled man at the beautiful gate it they say it was peter and john but when you read there you know it was peter that was making the whole commands when they laid hand in the book of acts chapter 8 on the believers at um, samaria to receive the holy ghost peter was still there backing him up but there was no single miracle recorded that john specifically did but he had a prophetic gifting you can see the evidence when, when he wrote the book of revelation he was the one that unveiled how heaven looked like to us in the clearer terms that's his own gifting because to one it is given the gift of word of knowledge word of wisdom prophecy healing miracle in the bible now say all oh, by the same spirit for example daniel and his three other friends when you read the book of Daniel chapter 1 from verse 17, the Bible says that God gave these friends unusual wisdom, but something else was added to Daniel. He had the ability to interpret dreams and vision. It is because he's called into the prophetic office. 
So God had to equip him more. So let me use myself, for example, myself, maybe she and show them more. We can be pressing into God now, seeking for something. But the season we come, we will notice that different operations of gift will start flowing out of us. Solomon can start receiving songs. It means his assignment has something to do with Samishle. So God can equip him with the gift of word of knowledge because he needs a prophetic gifting to be able to receive song from the Spirit. Then myself, maybe I will start receiving the gift of a seer. That's also prophetic operation. Because maybe a part of my assignment is that like Daniel, I will first, you know, it was Daniel that first of all wrote about the end. Book of Revelation is closely, for you to understand the book of Revelation, you, you need to first study Daniel. Because Daniel was the first person to wrote clearly about the end of time or the end of the world. You can see that from Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 10 and go. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say, God equips the believer based on the assignment. Now, here is the challenge. So many people abandon the assignment and they start glorifying the gift. That's the challenge now. So, for example, you can start seeing vision. But your assignment is not even a prophet. But it's just that there is somewhere in your assignment where you need to operate in the prophetic um, giftings. That, that's why God opened it. Then you start believing, calling yourself a prophet. Maybe there is not, you don't have any business being a prophet. So here is the challenge with my generation. If, maybe if you start seeing vision now, or the gift of working of miracles will start operating. Chances are the next thing that you want to open a ministry, or you want to start an online prayer, where you will start healing the sick. But that is not the assignment. The gift is are giving to help us successfully fulfill the assignment. And your gifting will become more sharper as you pursue the assignment. The more you understand your assignment, the more you give yourself to your assignment, your gifting will begin to get better. Because the reason for the gift is to successfully fulfill the assignment. Are you, if you're getting what I'm teaching already, you can give me a sign. So let's read where I called because of time. I don't want to, I believe I've already read the foundation of what we are looking at. Having then gift, look at what I'm reading now, Romans 12, verse 6. Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us. Now, the grace there is according, that word grace there is not primarily carries. You know, um, grace in Greek means carries. But it's also talking about our assignment. Having then gift that is different according to the assignment that is given to us. So the difference why we are not the same is because our assignments are not the same. That's why our giftings are not the same oppression. Are you following what I'm teaching you? Having then gift, differing according to the grace. Because if you want to just call it grace, we all receive the same grace. And what is that grace we receive? That why we are yet in a Christ died. But the emphasis here is about assignment, not that general carries, not grace and as per carries. So Paul is talking about operations of giftings here. You can also see it better in 1 Corinthians 12. Having then giftings or gift differing according to the assignment. I'm, I'm replacing grace there with assignment that is given to us. He now began to mention those gifts. He now said, whether it's prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. You see, as an apostle, there is a major of faith I carry. The apostolic office is, the, is what I can call like a chief office. As an apostle, God will give you the privilege to operate in the fivefold ministry. By that, I mean you have a measure of a prophetic gift. You have a measure of an evangelical gift. You have a measure of a teaching gift. You have a measure of, um, um, what's that, another thing, a fivefold. The apostle, the teacher, the prophet, um, the pastor, and I'm missing one. Apostle. Apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, and evangelist. So, as an apostle, you will have the operation of fivefold. If you see, if you have a genuine apostolic calling, but it's just that in those fivefold, one will be the highest for you. For me now, in that fivefold, the sharpest gift I have is teaching. That's the teaching office. 
But you know, I prophet. Some of you know that I'm very sharp in the prophetic by God's grace. And then, if you see me minister in a crusade ground, you will think I'm a, an evangelist. And part of what I do these days is pastoring. I spent time this morning close to one hour counseling a woman. That's pastoral office. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you are not careful, you will not know. So, like, I, I'm, I'm actually explaining, let me not digress. So, the proportion of the faith I'm operating on is because of I'm an apostle. That's my assignment. Having that gift, differing according to the grace that is given to us. And I mentioned prophecy, prophesy according to the portion of faith. Thank God he added that ministry. Ministry days, service, or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, that's the ministry of help. People, you can call kingdom financier. Are we together? And so on. He that ruleth, that's leadership. So are you seeing that this giftings is because of the assignment? Now, some assignments you are mentioned here. Leadership is an assignment. I'm looking at them. Let me, I'm looking for some of them. Where is it? Where is it? Teaching is an assignment. You can be called as a sharp teacher. Where, what is it again? I'm looking at others. Ministry of Health. That's destiny. Um, that's kingdom financier. Assignment. But the gifting is given because of the assignment. Hope I'm not confusing you. Please, if I'm sounding ambiguous, you can let me know. It's because of the assignment that the gifts we are given. Why I'm spending time to explain this is if you don't know it, you can come for a service where you are like me now. My assignment is as is I'm an apostle, but my primary calling as an apostle is to teach the word of God in simplicity or in accuracy. Now, other things you see me do, um, signs, wonders, miracle, prophetic things. You notice I don't spend hours doing it. I can teach the word of God for one hour at least. At least it must reach each one hour. Then I can spend 30 minutes administering the gift. Because the gift things God has given me is to help me to successfully deliver the assignment. So after I've taught you the word of God, which is the assignment, now to convince you, the giftings now helps me. But if I'm not sure, if I don't know this thing, I can, because I like, I'm, I know I can see vision, all those things. I can use one hour to prophesy to people, call phone number, all those things, and then use 10 minutes to teach. What does it mean? You are abandoning the assignment because you are enjoying the gift. Or I can come to a service, use one hour to pray for the sick, for people on that, all those things people like doing. But the reason why God gave me this gift is because of the assignment. To help me to, remember I told you, you cannot serve God without a gift. Let me say it again. It is difficult to work for God without a gift. God never sends any man to do anything without a gift. Hope you know faith is also a gift. That's gift of faith. Yes, that's gift of faith. To, to do something that is crazy, that's gift. Because like Samson, it might require that you enter into the, the, the coast of the enemy. There's a kind of faith you need to possess. It's like gifting. But those giftings are given for you. I'm sorry, they are given to you. You are equipped with it because of your assignment. So one of the things you must do for yourself is to sit down and know your assignment from God so that you don't confuse the assignment with the gift. You can prophesy. It doesn't mean you are called to be a prophet. It can just be a gift. Like John the, like John the Beloved giving to you so that you can document something for a generation. Some of you know I'm working on many projects. I'm writing a lot of books. So the wisdom of God, the knowledge I carry, is not to start glorifying myself. It is given to me, like Daniel, to be able to document something for a coming generation. That's the gift. But the assignment is I'm a teacher. And my teaching assignment demands that I should be equipped 
with some certain level of wisdom, certain level of understanding, certain level of knowledge, then I need the prophetic insight to decode the voice of God so that I'm not an intellectual teacher. I'm a prophetic teacher. So I've managed to know my assignment even as I enjoy the other gifts God has given me. If you're getting what I'm teaching you, just type hallelujah. So having established this, this is just the foundation now. Because I had to explain the reason for that gift. So that you don't confuse it at all. No matter how you think you can... This is a confusion in the body of Christ. People are glorifying gift. Now they abandon the assignment. Now, they are, God is so intentional with his assignment for your life because God is generational in his, in his purpose. Let me say it again. What God is doing in the life of a man did not start with that man. For example, some of you know we are in Ikolodu now. That's where the ministry is. That's where we are laboring. I know before God that some people are, are prayed for this thing we are doing. Intercessors might have been praying maybe 10 years earlier before we came there. And all these years, God has been training us for this season to take his word to that territory. I will never be so proud tomorrow to say yes, it's just because no. Maybe that the prophecy has been given years before I was born that a young man will come into this territory and rebuild the fallen wall like Nehemiah. So whatever God does like Moses, what you can call Moses' assignment started back from Abraham, Genesis 15. Your assignment did not start with you. God has, that's what we call predestinated. He has started this thing years from the foundation of the earth. He's just using individuals to fulfill it. So maybe we should look at Genesis 15. Let me show you what I'm saying, evidence of what I'm saying. Go to Genesis 15. Uh, I think it's from verse 17. Somebody take it out for me. Genesis 15. Verse 13. Genesis 15, 13 and 14. Give it, post it. Genesis 15. We are looking at 13 and 14. Let me show you what you call Moses' assignment. So you notice that Moses performed signs and wonders. Moses parted the Red Sea with his Lord. Moses could bring out water from the rock. Moses could plague the Egyptians and all that. All of those things are giftings he received from God to fulfill the assignment. Moses' assignment is to lead Israel out of captive, to lead them out of Egypt. So when God sends him, he equipped him with gift that his rod can turn to a snake. That's a gift. That he could stretch forth his hand at the rest thing to turn to red and frog and all those what you can call the plague that took place in egypt all those things are signs and wonders given to help him successfully fulfill the assignment but moses assignment is a deliverer that will bring israel out of captive make no mistake about that so that you don't mistook those powerful signs and wonders he did as his assignment because when i'm passionate about what i'm teaching a generation is losing it because we don't know that the gift is not the assignment and like i'm about to show you the assignment did not start with you it started with your grand or great great grandfathers or even people you don't know so here's genesis 15 13 he says and he said to abraham this is god talking to abraham notice it's still abraham here his name has not even been changed to abraham his name was changed to abraham in genesis 17 when god came to strike covenant with him and he said to Abraham, Truly, your seed will be living in a land which is not theirs as servants to a people who will be cruel to them for how many years? 400 years. But I will be the judge of that nation whose servants they are. And they will come out from among them with great wealth. So you heard that they did not leave Egypt empty-handed and they were... Did you see that God already told Abraham 400 years even before Moses was born? So you see that what you can call the anointing Moses is carrying 
is not purely what he labored for. Because we need to, you can see people moving in powerfully. You think it's because apostle can fast much, he can pray much. There were many things God is doing through my life. I can tell you, I did not pray for it. I did not fast for it. It is given to me because of the kind of assignment I have. And if you know this thing, you will never be proud. All of those powerful things Moses did, he didn't pray for those giftings. He didn't fast to receive it. But it's the assignment, the nature of your assignment determines or defines the kind of giftings God will release to you. The kind of territory God is sending you into. God knew the kind of weapon. Gifting is the equipment. You can't send a man to a field without giving him equipment to work with. A mechanic needs some tools. So it's the same thing in fulfilling your assignment. Those gifts are tools, equipment God gives to you. But please don't, it's like I send you, go and cut grass. Help me and cut that grass in that field. So that's the assignment. The assignment is to go and cut grass. But you can't cut grass with your teeth. You need not, you need um, cutlass. You need hoe, you need chopper, you need rake, lake. So I'll, I'll give you maybe a very sharp cutlass. I'll give you a hoe to help you. All of those things are what you call gifts. And you didn't pray or beg for it. The man sending you on assignment knew what it takes to accomplish that assignment. I'm using different things to make it simple to you. That the assignment is the major thing, but there are giftings which are given as a quick, as an instrument or tool for you to successfully fulfill your assignment. And the more you understand the assignment, the more you can successfully utilize the gift. You will under you will under you you will under you will under utilize that gift if you don't understand the scope of your assignment. But a man who has fully understood his assignment and who has given himself wholly to that assignment, there is no height he won't go. When you see people struggle in fulfilling destiny, the confusion is not that they are not equipped. The confusion is that they are yet to understand the assignment. It's like a defender trying to play a role of a striker. You will struggle. Because you are not equipped to strike goal. You are equipped to defend. It's like the goalkeeper trying to play the role of the midfielder. You see the confusion now. So Moses, whatever you call his gift, is because of this assignment. That after 400 days, I will rescue them. So when God called Moses, it is the assignment, the plan God has, starting with Abraham. Look at the, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and years later, Moses came into the sea. I also want to show you that what you call Joseph's assignment is attached to this same prophecy. Joseph had a dream where his brothers and all that were bowing to him. Hope you know that is not the assignment to No. Joseph's own assignment in this, what I call this big picture, this big thing God is doing, is that Joseph, through his position as a leader, is the one that will ensure that Israel came into Egypt. Every one of us has a role to play. And that's why we should not be jealous of anybody. You just need to discover your own path and play. Joseph wrote, now, let me say it. Now, if it will demand you being in a government, if it will demand you being a mortal millionaire, if it will demand you being extremely connected to successfully fulfill your assignment, God will give it to you. All of those positions are giftings, but they are not the assignment. So Joseph's assignment is not primarily to be a prime minister in Egypt. That this that one is a gift. That's a position he needs to occupy to fulfill the assignment. Let me show you the assignment. Psalms 105 from verse 16, I believe. Somebody helping me with that. Psalms 105. Put up verse 15 for me. Let me see. Or from verse 17. Start from 17. I don't have time to do that long exegesis. Hey, Start from 17. How many of you are getting what I'm sharing this morning already? My burden for this mentorship class is so that we will we'll stop struggling and then jealousy will go. Once you understand the assignment, then you can begin to ask God, review to me. I, I shared with us the other night when we started this mentorship stuff, how I came back from a program in ministration. I, I, I attended a church. The pastor said, when you go home tonight, ask God question about yourself. 
I came home that night. We started the ministry already. She said, Lord, I know you've called me as an apostle. You came to me and told me. So I know that one. But I don't know the giftings I, you have, you've given to me as an apostle. It was that night that God came to me with audible voice, audible voice. And he, he, he spoke audibly. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8. So he said it twice. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. I picked my Bible. And that was the day he says, to you it is given the gift of word of knowledge and word of wisdom. You know why? By the grace of God, I operate in other giftings by God's grace, you know. But one of the sharpest gifts is word of knowledge and word of wisdom. I can't be a good teacher if I don't possess extraordinary wisdom. I can't be a good teacher if I don't operate in an extraordinary knowledge. That knowledge is not um, what you can call um, gnosis. It's epignosis in Greek. A divine knowledge. You know it's something that is deeper than your age. I've once shared something with someone. The guy looked and said, ah, oh boy, you know things. But the, myself sharing it, I know it was given to me supernaturally. This morning I was mentoring a woman. Um, she might be like 10 years older than me. Why am I able to speak into her life, give her direction, gift of wisdom? That one is a gift. That's not my assignment. My assignment is a teacher, but the teaching office demands that you should host extraordinary wisdom. Are we following? Are we following? See, if your mic is on, please mute it so that we don't, inc- we don't bring in noise into the record. Amos, it's like your mic is on. Praise the Lord. So I asked for a scripture. What is it? Okay, thank you, Amos. Now, let me show you joseph assignment the position he occupied in egypt is a gift i've explained this thing if you started with me when we started esther's assignment is not to be a queen esther's assignment is to save the jewish people from the wrath of Haman. but like i said if it will demand god putting you in government to fulfill your assignment he will do it i've explained it with agriculture and if I send you like Amos, I can say, Amos, go and help me and, f- and help me in my farm. He's not going to work it with his bare hand. The, the assignment now is Amos, go to my farm and work. I've given him an assignment. But if I'm sending him on that errand, Amos, give him a gift. What is the gift? Amos, take a hoe. Amos, take shovel. Amos, take cutlass. Those things are what you can call gift. So I said the giftings are given to help you successfully fulfill your assignment. So I don't want to limit gifting to just the gift of the Spirit. Positions are also giftings. Esther being a queen, she's not the best. She's not the only virgin. In fact, she's the less, would I say, less qualified. But God made sure that she entered that seat. Why? That's the only way to save the Israelites or the Jews in the day that Ham, uh, um, Haman plans to waste them. So if what it will take is that young lady, you need to marry a rich man to fulfill the assignment, God will give you a rich husband. If what it will take is that you need to go abroad to fulfill your assignment, God will give you a visa. If what it will take is that you'll be influential to fulfill your assignment, God will send you to government like Joseph. But make no mistake that that, and this is why many people are abusing it. So the man who is a senator, thought is just to eat money and move with comfort. He has forgotten the assignment, but he's enjoying the gift. Some people are kingdom financiers. The reason why God has made them very rich is so that the gospel will not suffer. So God will release resources to them so that as they make money, they reach out to young ministers or some ministry, missionary ministries to support them financially. Here is the challenge now. When they receive those giftings from God, they disappear. And that's how suddenly they become irrelevant because God's assignment must be done. So what God will do is to lay them off, raise another generation. When you see a millionaire that understood like a kingdom financier, you see how they give as if they are possessed. You would think they are foolish. You know, they understood the assignment that my wealth is only um, the gift is given to my assignment is to make sure that this minister doesn't suffer or to make sure that this job doesn't suffer or to take all of these kids children off from the streets and sponsor their education you see them doing it passionately 
you will think whether they are possessed. Is it that you don't know what to do with money? No, that's a man that understood the assignment and the gift. My assignment is to make sure that these children are all in scholarship. What is the gift? God will supply the gift, which is the money. Are you getting it now? Because if you don't separate your gifting, and I've said it that gifting can be in a way of like, like a position, like Esther, like Joseph. So let's look at Joseph. This is the prophecy of Joseph. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with feathers. He was laid in iron, verse 19, until the time that is that his word came. Now, can you give me this scripture? Continue. Maybe copy more. This is not enough. Copy it to 23. Till verse 23. Add till verse 23. Okay. Add till verse 23. It's not enough. I need more. Is anybody helping me? We don't have much time. I want us to fully maximize this time. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. I think somebody posted something here. Yeah, hey, but this scripture doesn't look like what I like. Oh. Amos, give me your own on WhatsApp. Okay, thank you. Verse 20. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Verse 21. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. Verse 22. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. 23. Israel also came into Egypt. Jacob sojourned into the land of Ham. This is Joseph's assignment. Remember Genesis 15? I showed you before. You remember it? We posted it. We've talked on Genesis 15 from verse 13. How God already told Abraham that your, your generation or what you can call your offspring we became a slave in a land for 400 years. There was, there, is, there was never any possible way for that to happen if Joseph is not in the place of power. So to fulfill that prophecy, God had to move a man. So he said he sent who sent God? Verse 17. He sent a man before them. Who are the them? The, the Israelites. So if the man who is sent before the Israelites now went there and became a king and forget, he's now eating, he's not enjoying. You see how people enjoy the gift and forget the assignment. He sent a man before them. The them there is Israelites. Because if you read Psalm 105, the contest is about the journey of Israelites. He sent a man before them. All of those things he passed through is just for God to prepare him so that he doesn't go to the temple, he doesn't get to the throne and forget the assignment. So God prepares his servant. I've taught it on the path of the just. If you're not listening to that message, I refer you to it. That everything we are passing through now, the pruning, the chiseling, is to prepare us to un- so that when this world comes, I know the weight of my calling, you know, by God's grace. And part of what is connected to my calling is called inference. So that when the inference finally comes, I won't forget the assignment. I'm called to sit down to write books for a generation. I'm called to sit down to disciple people, to teach the word of God. Any other thing God is giving to me is just the equipping for my assignment. Now, chances are that when I'm being called everywhere in the world now, I can abandon this teaching ministry and start giving people prophecy. Because prophetic gifts can market you well or start focusing on healing the sick. That's not my assignment. He sent a man before them. And when that man got there, now Jacob could come in fulfillment of the prophecy God gave Abraham in Genesis 15. So I'm trying to show you from scripture that your position. That the reason why you can be very rich tomorrow is maybe you are called to be a kingdom financier. If you don't know it, you can make that money and then to help with the pastors, God has raised you to help. To help with the children, God has raised you to help. To help with the people that are supposed to benefit from that position. You know why? You forgot the assignment. Now you are enjoying the gift. And like I said, that is the challenge we are having in the society today. The guy used to be a, a, a church worker. Sunday services is always present. God now found a David, sent a David to the throne. David now gets there and forgets the assignment. 
I have found my servant David. So God searches for men he can use to fulfill the assignment. Those men now get there, they forget the assignment, they enjoy the gift. Are you seeing it now? I don't know whether I, I if you're getting what I'm teaching, just type hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Maybe I will I will from a lot I will round up with one more example, then I can take questions. So I've told you about Esther already. That the whole goal of Esther being a king, a queen is not really because of Esther. See, you are not none of us is too important to let me say, including myself, nobody is too important. So you can be replaced if you if you mess up. Esther is never too important. Give me Esther chapter 4 from verse 12 to 14. Because it it, it, it got to a point. Esther started feeling important. The uncle Mordecai had to remind her. Put it up. Esther 4, 12 to 14. That your position is only the gift. It's not the assignment. You can be a rich man's wife tomorrow. Please don't think it's really because you are too beautiful or what. No. God just placed you in a position because there is an assignment you need to fulfill. There are destinies you need to invest into. Don't get there and forget it. Be a Joseph there. Let it be an opportunity to open the door for those people to come in. Don't be a global ministry and forget the assignment. Don't do that. Understand that that platform is only an opportunity. And let me say this. There is no height you won't get to in life when you understand your assignment. When God sees that this man understands, I will share with my own life. When I started ministry early, because I came from a family, I saw my eldest brother prophesying. He could tell you anything. The guy is very sharp in the prophetic. I desired the prophetic gift. I, I, I desired it. It wasn't coming forth. The only thing I know is that I can teach. But something within my spirit is telling, was telling me those days, you will operate in the prophetic gift. Don't worry. But I focused in studying my Bible. I spent time reading books, developing my teaching gift. One of those days, God came to me and said, you are poor, you are like Paul. Study the life of Paul. I'm going to raise you like Paul. I said, okay. I started studying my Bible. How did God raise Paul? Paul started also as an ordinary teacher. From ordinary teacher, the Bible recorded in, I think that's Acts. I don't have time to put up those ones now. But I think it's Acts chapter 14, verse 3. That God now granted that miracles should be done through the life of Paul. What that word granted means this guy has understand his assignment. Giftings began to open up. God now granted. Maybe you put it up. I, I, will, I will tie up all of this. If you put up extra for me, put up Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Then Acts chapter 19 from verse 10 to 11. Put it up. Acts 14, verse 3. Acts 19 to 10 to 11. So I had to study Paul. Because God told me you are like Paul. I'm going to take you up like Paul. The way he started as an ordinary teacher. He was teaching with, what is his name? Um, Barnabas. Even before his commissioning in Acts 13. As of Acts 11.25, he was already teaching with Barnabas. The Bible says when Barnabas came into the city, he sought for Paul and they were teaching. So then, as he remained faithful in their assignment, the Bible now says that God now granted he permitted that he can do miracle. Where is that? So Acts 40 says, long time, look at this, Acts 14, 3, talking about Paul. Long time, therefore, abode they, that's, and what is in Paul and Barnabas. Long time, therefore, abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted, that word granted them means, and he permitted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. What it means is that the more you give yourself to assignment, the more God releases more giftings to you. I know you know about the parable of the talent. One received one, another received three, another received five. The guy that put his own giftings into work received double. The guy who was just keeping the gift back, it was even taken from him. That's why I said every one of us have a special gift. Everyone. Our giftings are different. 
and we did not receive the same measure. I've showed you that already um, from Romans chapter 12, verse 6. That he gives us according to our assignment. But you have something. Now, as Paul gave himself fully to the work of the gospel, the Bible says, long time, not few, I don't know how many years, but long time he abode just preaching. Nothing else, just teaching. The, the, the way I, mean, I was doing it when I started, just teaching. We gather in the class those days with charity and um, um, like, all those names. I, I, just, I think the oldest person online now is charity. That's the oldest. We gather in classroom, we share the word, we pray and go. And that is it. And Hepzibah, I can remember those names, Paula and go. We are doing it. There was no prophetic gifting. I don't pray for it. I don't have all those giftings. That was also the story of Paul. But as he continued, the Bible says, and God now granted. That was granted me. God now permit. The more you give yourself to the assignment, don't, like I said, remember it's called a gift. If it is a gift, it means you, you did not pray for it. You did not fast for it. It is given to you. Like I'm using my phone. It was gifted to me. I didn't fast for it. I didn't beg for it. But the man that gifted me a phone saw that there was a necessity for me to have a phone at that point because my phone, I'm using it for the work of ministry. So the man who has understood this assignment, there is no you need that God will not make available to you. That's what I'm trying to show you. Acts 19.10, he now says, now you see that as Paul, the more Paul gave himself to the assignment, the more the manifestation of the gifts were increasing. If you met me four years ago when we started ministry and you come under my ministration now, you will know it's a different person you are seeing. All of these giftings that are being displayed is because I stayed faithfully in the assignment. I'll be lying to you to tell you it's because of my fasting. No, sir. I don't fast that much. Forget all these deep, deep things some pastors are trying to do. No, we are not strong. God is our sufficiency. The beauty of what I do is because I know the assignment. So God will not withhold any gift from me as long as I give out, I give myself to the assignment. Long time you are, you are both. If so, if your own is to serve, just keep serving. If your own is, some of you were there on Sunday where some people were giving testimony. A lady in the ministry started paying tight more than what she was earning. Why? She said when she came into the ministry, she asked God, there is something I have to do in this ministry. And she said, God told her, you're a kingdom financier. I brought you here to finance this mission. She said she started giving her tight more than what she was earning. And in a matter of a few months, her earnings doubled. Some of you were there when she was telling that off such. So one of our sisters last Sunday, I think Ludi was also telling her own testimony. She said when she had that testimony, it, it, it triggered something inside of her. She contacted me and said, Apostle, God is laying it in my heart to start giving half of my salary. I said, no, I, that thing you're saying, I'm not sure it's God. Go and fast and pray and be sure. Because I wanted that to be sure. I believe she sorted it out. She wanted to buy a sewing machine. She was hoping to save money. I think for one year. I just told her, you'll get your sewing machine, don't worry. I just said it casually. No praying, no fasting, no shouting. And she was sharing her testimony on Sunday. How the person she was supposed to save the money with, if I remember how she shared that testimony, bought the sewing machine for her without demanding one Ella, Just go and pick your sewing machine. You know why? There is nothing God will not give to a man who understands the assignment. So our the other sister understood, even though she can sing, because she's in the choir those days, I can teach the part of the choir. Even though she can lead prayer, I've seen her prophesy sometimes at Upsurge. Those things are giftings, but she understood, as long as I'm in this ministry, part of my assignment here is to make sure that resources are supplied. And she took it, she didn't tell me, and nobody cajoled her, nobody, she just knew it from God and she started doing it faithfully. I think she started paying a um, tithe of some time to send five dollars, suddenly ten thousand. Ah, uh -uh, where are you getting ten thousand from? That means ending has increased to 100k, and it continued like that. That faithfulness in the assignment. I'm trying to show you that the gift is not really what you need to pray or fast for. The one who has sent you on an assignment knows that you need those giftings, but are you faithful? assignment. Acts 19 and Paul kept increasing. By the time we go to Acts 19 from verse 10 to 12, he says, this went on. This is Paul carried for two years teaching. This, so the assignment of Paul is purely a teacher, nothing more. 
like my own is purely a teacher, nothing more. Any other thing we do is a gift. This went on for two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the provinces of Asia heard the word of the Lord, so that even handkerchief and aprons that touch it. In other words, God began to magnify the giftings. Notice he did not say that Paul sent apron or sent handkerchief. No, anything that touches the hand of Paul, the, the, that touches the body of Paul, contacts power. People were taking his handkerchief to go and cast out demons, to go and heal the sick. In fact, the Bible put it this way: that special God granted special miracle to be done through the hand of Paul. Special, on, on, on extraordinary miracle. As a man who has understand his assignment. The question this morning is, do you understand God's assignment upon your life? It's not limited to this ministry. Generally in your life, can you beat your chest and say, I know what God has sent me to do. You know, I wrote in my book, um, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. The reason why people abuse the position is because they don't know the reason why they were there, they were placed there. The reason why people abuse resources is because they don't know the reason why God made those resources available. As a leader, if I don't understand why God placed me in a leadership position, I can abuse it. I can start sleeping with the young ladies. I can start wasting the ministry money because I'm the one in custody of it. I can start wasting resources. That's abuse. But when I know that the reason why I'm giving this grace is not to prove that I'm too important. No, nobody is important in the assignment of God. But I've understood the gift. Sorry, I've understood the assignment. And and the more you understand the assignment, it makes you more humble. There is nothing special about Abraham. Hope you know that. Abraham was an idol worshiper when God called him. That is grace. So it's not as if he, he doesn't even know God purely an idol worshiper but God shows a man to walk with there's nothing special about me I was living in immorality when God called me I didn't even know him at all so there's nothing special about me and I'm also telling you there's nothing special about you any position God places you on please see it as a gift it's an opportunity for you to represent him well no matter where you found yourself every equipping in fact that you are beautiful as a young lady Prince Esther's beauty is just a gift to get her to the throne the king likes a beautiful girl if Esther was to be ugly the king would not receive her as a queen some of us God will create us handsome God will create us beautiful Prince, as men are admiring you don't forget your assignment the beauty can only be like a strategy of God to introduce you to the husband because you know that the man that will come for you will want maybe a fine, beautiful damsel. And God had, from when he was making you in his theater, oh, David said, I'm wonderfully, I'm fearfully made. So he spent time preparing you because you already know the kind of man you will marry. But all of those things are because of an assignment. Don't abuse it. The reason why people abuse it is because they don't know why God made them beautiful. Yes, sir. Young man, you are handsome is not a ticket to sleep along with the ladies. I used to have a pastor those days, a very beautiful young lady. I went to her church because I was running after fine girl. She normally said, toast them for Jesus. When you come to her church, hey, she's married now. Pastor Rejoice. Far 2014, when I went to a Edo State Polytechnic. You come to her church, young, young boys everywhere. Her smile can melt your heart. Boys, you are running after her. She was using it as a strategy to roll boys into church. Myself, I went to her church, even though I was a Catholic then. Why? I was hoping that I would date her. And that was what everybody was hoping. Today, she's married to the founder of that church. She understood her beauty is only a gift to work for the kingdom. Some of us came because we wanted her as girlfriend. But when we came that Sunday, the gospel we were presented, some people gave their life to Christ. So your beauty is a gift. Please don't abuse it. Your position is a gift. Don't abuse it. The anything at all you think you have is a gift. Separate it and know the assignment. Focus on that assignment. Mama used to tell me those days as a young doctor, 
she used to share with me how, how many shows she used to want. So aside being a doctor and today a professor, she understood that God gave her this privilege as she treats her patient. Hope you know every patient in your hand is vulnerable to you. Because as a doctor, any question you ask them, they will answer. They are truthful to you. She used us, that opportunity she was winning so for God. As she's treating you, she's telling you about Jesus. Daddy, I can only treat you, but Jesus is the healer. And according to what she shared with me, she wants so many souls for God as a medical doctor. So even your profession can even be a, a strategy to fulfill the assignment. Our time is up. I want us to pray so that people are going to work and rest. I don't have time. I would have to also show you a Gentile king called Silas in Isaiah chapter 45. 200 years later, after Isaiah prophesied about him, a Gentile king who doesn't know God, who doesn't fear God, but he understood the assignment. God empowers Silas. Just for you, you can read about it later. Isaiah chapter 45, you can read from verse 1 to 4. I empowered him with resources just to release my people from captive. Because Israel are now exiled in Babylon for seven. And the prophecy of Jeremiah is that they will stay there captives for 70 years. When 70 years was accomplished, it's time for them to go back. God has to raise a king, empowered him, a patient king called Cyrus. You, you also see the documentation in Ezra, chapter 1 to verse 4. And Cyrus, as a king, received the wealth of Babylon because he captured Babylon. God, Babylon those days is like America. But God empowered the man because Israel had to go back. So God can empower you just to deliver his own people from hunger. God can empower you just to help the poor. A man of God reached out to me this evening, and this is testimony. I'm not bragging. A pastor have not eaten. Can I get 1,000? I don't have much. I have a lot of even what I need to pay. I said, well, a man of God, what is 1,000? I had to send him something. Let me say times five of what he had. He was saying things. I said, no, 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 no. I received this money. Maybe it's because of you that God even gave me this money. When you understand the assignment, you will not embrace the gift as if your life depends on it. Because as long as I fulfill the assignment, God will make the gifts available. If it will take you being a millionaire to fulfill the assignment, I pray that God will make you a millionaire. Silas was empowered to capture Babylon so that Israel can go back with wealth to go and rebuild. Just maybe I'll give you a part of it and we'll pray. Ezra chapter 1, give me from verse 1 to 4. But to understand this story well, you need to read Isaiah 45 to understand it. But let me just summarize it. Ezra 1, 1 to 4. Give me Ezra 1 from verse 1 to 4. That's my last scripture. We'll pray. Our time is up. 12.30 to 1.30 is one hour. And I said it's one hour class. We can continue tomorrow. If God just made a grace to talk about other things I said we'll read, we'll study on. Just to help us navigate through our prophetic seasons and become what God has written concerning us. Let me read. And now in the first year of Silas, the king of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. I told you that your assignment is older than you. 200 years after Jeremiah had prophesied it, Isaiah also prophesied it. This is a man fulfilling it. So that I mean, at Ikolodu, when we were coming on Sunday, a woman I don't even know how she knew us was calling me a post to welcome. I don't know how she's not been into the church. Could it be that these were the people that prayed that God should send a man and into their territory to come and do this assignment you are doing? You must know that whatever God is doing through you is older than you. It's only a privilege for us to be a tool in the hand of God. Let me finish it up. He said, Now, the first year of Silas, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Silas, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Silas, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth. You see, this is a Gentile king recognizing that all of this gift is for an assignment. He had charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, 
which is in Judea. Verse 3. Who is there among you all his people? His God be with you. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judea, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 4 is the last verse. Whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goose and with beast beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. This is a Gentile king understood the assignment that I was able to capture and subdue Babylon is because the prophecy that God gave through his prophet Jeremiah must be fulfilled. So the gift I receive as a king is not for me to start partying. It's not for me to start eating. It's because I know that it is because God wants to release his people from captive, number one, and God wants to rebuild his temple in Jerusalem. I'm available. We're going to pray. Somebody, you are going to cry out to God in this new month. Lord, maybe you have abused the assignment. Or maybe I don't I didn't even fully understood why you made me beautiful. I didn't even fully understood why you, you gave me this opportunity. I didn't even fully understood it before. Now I understand. Please give me the grace to serve you faithfully with the gift you've made available. Is somebody praying? Go ahead and pray. We are praying. The Gentile king understood that the empowerment he received is for one purpose to go and rebuild the temple of God in, in Judea. He understood that. He made a proclamation that they can go and they should not go empty. My brother, my sister, have you understood the assignment? Have you been able to separate it from the giftings or the positions God has placed you on? Go out to him and say, Lord, in this new month, may I set my heart into fulfilling your assignment. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither had it entered into the hearts of men what god has prepared i can tell you before god there is something mighty he has prepared for you but you will receive them the more you remain faithful to the assignment make me a faithful steward oh god is somebody crying out to god that i'll be faithful in the assignment the bible says in romans 14 from verse 8 none of us live it for himself none should die for himself he says, so whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. So whether we are living or we are dead, we are for the Lord. That is a man who has understood his assignment, that I am for the Lord. Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. So if I'm alive, I'm living out the will of the Lord. If I die, I die in the will of the Lord. A man who has understood his assignment is not scared of death. I am for the Lord. Can you go ahead and cry? I live unto you, O God. Now, if you've not been faithful, the Lord is giving you the grace to rededicate yourself to that assignment. Lord, I ask for another chance to run the race that is set before me. I ask for another chance to be faithful, to be up and doing in my assignment. Maybe you've been glorifying the gift. No, the gift is not really the assignment. Now, Lord, I understand better why you gave me wisdom. Lord, now I understand better why you gave me understanding. Lord, now I understand better why you are putting me in the place of leadership. Now, God, I understand better why you gave me this morning. Now, God, I understand better like Esther, why you made me beautiful. Lord, now I understand why you give me the ability to speak well. It is because you want me to properly represent you. Help me to be a faithful steward. It's a call for rededication to the God's assignment upon our life. Every single one of us have all it takes to be great. But if you really want to enjoy it, you need to understand the assignment. Cry to him. Go ahead, my brother. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Make me a faithful steward. Give me the grace to utilize the giftings you've given to me just to serve your purpose. Just to serve your purpose. Just to faithfully serve your purpose. That at the end of my life, I'll be welcome into your kingdom as a worthy soldier who has labored well in the field. Thank you, Father, in 
Jesus Christ's name we pray. Last one more prayer. Can you pray and declare again into the new month? This month, my life is full of results. My life is full of evidence of God's faithfulness. Go ahead and make that declaration. Go ahead, go ahead. It says, death and life are in your tongue. And do it, and they that love of that love it jealous will eat of it. Go ahead and speak life into the new month. This month, my life is full of results. My life is full of results. I am an evidence of God's faithfulness. Oh, the new seasons are open up to me to continue to represent God faithfully. Seasons are open up. Esther from a slave girl to a queen. Joseph from the prison to a palace. I'm empowered to serve God's purposes for me on earth. In this few months, I'm empowered. My hands are strengthened in the name of Jesus Christ. This November, I see favor. Doors are open for me. I stand before kings. He says, you will not stand before me, men. You will stand before kings. I stand before kings to represent God's purposes for my life. I stand before kings fulfilling God's assignment for my destiny. I open the door for many to be blessed. I open the door for many to be empowered. Through my life, many are getting blessed. Through my life, many are fulfilling their purpose. I am blessed to bless others. I am empowered to empower others. I am lifted to lift others. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and make those declarations. Yes, say what you mean and mean what you say. I am blessed to bless others. I am lifted to lift others. I am empowered to empower others. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I give you praise. Oh, God. Oh, Safila Mande, I say, Atoma Nakila Tosia. Lines are falling into present places for me this month. I have a godly heritage of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Abba, we give you praise. Can somebody worship him? Spend a few minutes thanking him for this truth he has unveiled to you. Thank him for that. Thank you for bringing this truth to me. Now I make adjustments to run the race that is set before me. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you. Ah, see, I take Kofa, Mana E Sata, Mene in the Kofa, Le Brando, Semine Elatos, see, I take Brando Safalata. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. I want to pray for you. As I was praying right now, the Lord ministered the theme for this month. Now, 10 minutes before I am about to say what I want to say now, I didn't even know it. When I was teaching, I didn't even know it. But the way my own giftings operate, when I'm done teaching, the prophetic opens. If I want to see God use me in a mighty way, I will first of all serve my assignment. Once I'm done teaching, the healing anointing will be present to heal the sick. Once I'm done teaching, the gift of the Spirit to begin to operate. And when we are praying, the Lord began to speak to me. He says, I should announce to us the month of November. Believe what I'm telling you. You will have your testimony. It's the month of results. Let me say it again. I lie you now. This is what the Lord just ministered to me now. November is the month of results. That which you've been seeking the Lord for from January down to this moment, that which you've been crying out for, this month you are receiving that result. November is your month of results. Thus says the Lord. Let me say it again. The Lord says, November is the month of result. I pray for you. According to this prophetic word, may you see results in all you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, experience results in your career, experience results in your place of work, experience results in your ministry, experience result, tangible result. God says, I will give you the proof. Result talks of proof. That which you'll be looking for this is, you will receive the result this month in the name of jesus and i announce in the name of jesus no power in heaven no power on earth no power beneath the earth will truncate god's purpose for your life in the name of jesus christ may your life be full of result this month may your life be full of result this month ah and seller announced in genesis chapter one 
it says the bible says and god did unto sarah like he has said and god visited sarah like he has spoken and the bible says that sarah says the lord has made me laugh and all who hear of it will laugh with me that is a woman receiving her own result i speak to somebody under the sound of my voice in this month of november my father who is also your father will make you laugh and all who will see your result they will come to celebrate with you they will come to laugh with you in the name of i'm seeing somebody in the spirit that's a work you be expecting the call for a while now get ready they will call you i'm seeing somebody that submitted something like an application you'll be waiting you'll be you have you've been expecting it you have been expecting it the lord said i should announce that person this november you are seeing the result you are seeing the result protocols are broken for your sake in the name of jesus christ i speak fruitfulness i speak result all who hear of it will join you to testify all who will behold it will join you to laugh i also speak to this ministry lord this month like you've spoken to us we will see results in our place of labor at ecolodu in the name of jesus so prosper the word of god and prospered your word continue to increase in our midst and it prospers in the life of people thank you holy spirit we give you praise we thank you again for your mercy and for your faithfulness in jesus christ's name we pray as you are logging out just type this is my month of result i have my evidence already have you been blessed from this station god bless you good morning and win today.